Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the continuation of our survey of Leonard Bernstein boxes. And I've got one right here. Okay, you ready? Concertos and orchestral works. Concertos and orchestral works. 80 CDs worth of them. <sighs> mm -hmm. And some of the best stuff is in here. There's some really cool music in here, I have to say. So, you know, I mean, these boxes are awkward and and hard to store. Well, you can store them flat. I guess you can stick them in a bookcase. I don't know. I have them just lying here flat on top of a, a counter here, which is that thing. Up on top of that, I got a bunch of these boxes. It's just craziness. Absolute craziness. Uh, so let's just see what's in here, shall we? Okay. The open El Boxo. And we have the little bookie. It's a little booklet, you know, I mean, it's got a track listing, which is good. Um, and I think we'll just go through the track listing, why don't we? Um, that's probably easier. As usual with these things, you get, you know, these things are in these slot things. And if you lay them flat, at least they'll they'll stay in their slot. If you try and stack it up, somehow they manage to jump up and mix around. I'm not quite sure how that happens. I mean, it's sturdy. It's a good way to store them. That's true. So I can't complain about that. And you do get these these lovely, like, you know, Bernstein photos for your portrait gallery. You know, on each one, there's like a different picture. Boy, a guy had a lot of pictures taken of him. I mean, when you consider that there are 80 of these suckers. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I feel like, you know, hi, it's Uncle David, and now it's story time. Once upon a time, there was a conductor. He made a ton of recordings, and we're going to talk about some of them. Disc one, Bach and Vivaldi, concertos, concertos, BWV 1042, 1060, 1052, and Vivaldi's Concerto RV 443. Oh, that's so helpful, isn't it? That's really useful. I'm with Isaac Stern, Gomberg, Heim, Gould, New York Philharmonic. Well, it's Glenn Gould. I mean, the Gould is, as we know, is Glenn Gould. And here it is. Let's just look at it here. Uh, the, the, the Vivaldi is a piccolo concerto. There you go. And BWV 1052 is that famous concerto recording with Glenn Gould. It's mono. And then there's the, the violin concerto, which is 1042. And the concerto for oboe, strings, and basso continuo, BWV 1060R. That is a concerto for two harpsichords that has been reconstructed in what some believe to have been its original form. There you go. I mean... You know, period instruments, nah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a standard, modern, big band, Bach and Vivaldi thing. Okay, Barber, the Violin Concerto, and the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. That's true. The Concerto for Orchestra didn't go with symphonies, did it? So with Isaac Stern, I mean, it's very good. I mean, the Stern Barber is, is a reference recording. It's, a, it's an absolute classic. And the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra is excellent. It's a little scruffy here and there, but in the right places where the excitement is building. And that's something that's something a lot of modern conductors don't understand. That when you're getting to a climax or things are really hopping, it's okay to let go. And if the ensemble gets a little tiny bit shaky at times, that adds to the excitement. That's something, for example, that Fortwängler understood. The only problem with Fortwängler is that his ensemble was shaking, was shaky where there were no climaxes. It was shaky all the time, but in the right place, uh, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of, oh, we're just, we're just, we're just throwing caution to the breeze. That's really a good thing. And uh, you know, young conductors, if you're out there, keep that in mind. Why don't you? Then we have more bar talk concertos two and three with Philippe Entremont. Those are rare. I mean, you know, people don't play those. Entremont was never known as a Bartok guy. So that's really nice to have. They're good to have back. They're good performances, like I said. And then we have more Bartok, the concerto for two pianos and percussion, and his violin concerto number two. Now, the concerto for two pianos and percussion is just awful. 
It's horrible. It's an orchestration of the Sonata for Two Pianos and Percussion, which is a masterpiece. Nothing is going to make that piece work. Nothing. The orchestra is just useless. You have this big orchestra. It just it doesn't do anything. It's insane. The second violin concerto is again with Stern, and it's quite good. These Stern recordings with Bernstein were some of his best, and they're really, really fine. Then we have the Berg Violin Concerto with Stern again, and the Bartok Rhapsodies. It's a very good Berg Violin Concerto. I like that performance. It's really hyper-romantic and juicy. Beethoven Piano Concertos 1 and 2. Uh, Bernstein and Gould are the soloists. And, uh, you know, I, they're nobody's favorite Beethoven Concertos, let's face it, but they, they're not terrible. And then numbers 3 and 4, um, also with... with it just says Gould? Is that... Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Those are also with Gould, with the Columbia Symphony and the New York Philharmonic. I mean, Glenn Gould and Beethoven was always kind of weird, you know? Glenn Gould fans like these performances because they're by Glenn Gould. But as far as, you know, people having favorite Beethoven, nah, not, not hardly. Then we've got Concertos 3 and 5 with, with Rudolf Serkin and the New York Philharmonic, and those are classics. Serkin was a brilliant Beethoven pianist, and Bernstein was you know, on top of his game, and they did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful set. Then we've got, let's see, the Beethoven Violin Concerto with Stern, and the Bach Concerto for two pianos with Stern and Menuhin. Um, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, decent, you know, winning no medals, but very solid, you know, it's they're fine. Then we have, let's see, oh, the Berlioz, Harold in Italy. Oh, that's really good. Really, really good. Who's the, who's the violist? Lincer. What's his name? William Lincer? Fred Lincer? Marvin Lincer? Sorry, Mr. Lincer. I just don't remember. Um, and the, let's see, the Chausson Poem and Ravel Psigana with Zeno Francescati. Now, of course, the Chausson Poem is so pretty. It's beautiful. And Ravel Psigana is just the most awful thing he ever wrote. Oh, I hate that piece. My God. Some of you have said you love it, so that's good. Please do. It deserves love from somebody. It's not getting any from me. That's for damn sure. Brahms, Piano Concerto number 1 with Glenn Gould. I think this is just a mediocre Brahms first Piano Concerto. You know, there's a, there's a story behind this Brahms Piano Concerto. I just have to say, this is the one where, it's actually not the performance where the thing happened, but it's the one people talk about because during these, this run of performances, the thing happened. The thing was that Bernstein got out and announced that he and Gould could not see eye to eye on the work, and so he was going to just do it anyway and see what happened. Actually, in real life, from what I've been told, the performance where they did not agree because of Gould's excruciatingly slow tempos was a, a, a different performance entirely. And I don't know, I mean, no one was there. We don't know how it went. Anyway, the, the other one, this one, um, is, is it, it's slowish, but average. It's just not a very interesting Brahms first piano concerto. But the fascinating thing is this, because it has this history about it, because it comes with this mythos, people listen to it. That's the difference. Even my colleagues in the critical profession, people want to nitpick this performance to death. And they, they talk about it and give it a respect and serious attention that many finer Brahms piano concerto recordings would never receive all because of this story, not because of the music. And it just goes to show that in the wonderful world of music, where you have millions of recordings of the same thing, external factors may determine what, which ones we pay attention to. And because we pay attention to them, our valuation of them changes. It has nothing to do with how good the music is. It has to do with how much time we spend listening to it, how much attention we give it. That's a phenomenon. Something to keep in mind. You know, it really is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Then we have Brahms Piano Concerto Number 2 with Andre Watts. It's a lot better than the Brahms Piano Concerto Number 1 with Glenn Gould. Uh, Brahms Violin Concerto with Zeno Francescati and Sibelius. I like these performances. They're lovely. Francescati was, was a wonderful violinist. Um, and let's see. Aaron Copeland and William Schumann. Ooh, the Copeland Piano Concerto. Uh, and... The Concerto on Old English Rounds and to the Old Cause with William Schumann. I mean, this is with Copeland playing the piano, McGinnis, Gomberg, uh, the Camerata Singers, 
and the New York Philharmonic. You see, this is one of those really interesting discs that, you, you know, they get buried in these collections. It would be so nice. It would be great if Sony, you know, and the Bernstein people got their got themselves together and they issued a disc called The Interesting Bernstein, a little box, a dozen, dozen CDs maybe, of all the unusual and interesting repertoire that he did. Bernstein, not the normal stuff. That would be, that would be splendid. Instead of having to buy 80 CDs to get these, these really interesting bits of repertoire that nobody else did, that would be great. It's never going to happen, but it would be great. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? List, Rachmaninoff and Ravel. Okay, List, Piano Concerto Number 1 with Andre Watts, Rachmaninoff, Paganini Rhapsody with Gary Grafman, and the Ravel Concerto in G with Bernstein himself. That was one of his, his few concert concerto signature pieces. And it's, it's quite wonderful. You know, he redid it. There was a recording issued with the Vienna Philharmonic, which is just a disaster from the Vienna Philharmonic's point of view. They, like, mess up all over the place. So this is the good one. And then Mozart's Concerto 15 and 17 with Bernstein and the Columbia Symphony. He did those well. They're lovely performances. They really are. Then we have Mozart piano, Concerto for Two Pianos with Golden Fisdale and the Concerto for Three Pianos with Bernstein involved and Eine Kleine Nachtmusik just because. I mean, it fills out the disc. It's lovely to have. It's Remember, this is Concerto and other orchestral pieces. So Eine Kleine Nachtmusik is an other uh, then we have, let's see, Mozart Piano Concerto 25. Oh, yeah. And the Violin Concerto. Um, well, no, Mendel, Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. And that's with Bernstein playing the piano. 25 is a masterpiece. It's a great piece. And Isaac Stern in the Mendelssohn with the Israel Philharmonic. And then, let's see, Mendelssohn and Robert Schumann. You know, the Robert one, not the William one. Uh, the Robert one. And we've got the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto and Cello Concertos with Pichas Zuckerman and Leonard Rose. Oh, my God. Goodness. Um, oh, this is a great disc. Nielsen and Hindemith, the Nielsen Flute Concerto with Julius Baker, the Clarinet Concerto with Stanley Drucker. I have to scratch myself there. And the Violin Concerto with Hindemith, you know, with Hindemith Violin Concerto with Stern. That's a great record. The two Nielsen Concertos and the Hindemith Concerto. Cool, cool stuff. Again, not your usual thing. And the Hindemith is one of the great performances. Rachmaninoff, Piano Concerto Number 2 with Philippe Entremont and Prokofiev. Violin Concerto Number 2 with Isaac Stern. I mean, these were all just meat and potatoes recordings when I was growing up as a kid. You know, you went through the bins, they were always available, those were the ones you bought, and they were very, very good. You know, nowadays when there are 3,000 recordings of everything, we make comparisons, you know, those long comparisons, those long, windy talks that I do, those repertoire talks, where we have to put 50 of them side by side. It, it, it's hard. It's, it's different. And I feel a little bad because some of the ones that I like grew up with, which were perfectly fine, don't get into the list. Not because there's anything wrong with them. It's because they're just some astounding other ones. You know, or or through sheer quotidian circumstance, you know, you just don't have the disc sitting around anymore. Because I I don't know, I'm like if I'm like a lot of you, what happens is, or a lot of us, you know, we we have we get these these boxes because it's really convenient to have all of this material in a box. But then you know you put it away, no one looks at it anymore. You forget what's in it, and then I want to do like a repertoire talk, and I pull out all the single CDs because they're just much easier to find. You know, they're all alphabetized and nice and whatever, and I'm not going to go look through a bazillion boxes to try and find the one disc with its weird coupling. <laughs> it, 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 my, my life is so complicated sometimes. Okay, uh, Saint-Saëns, Piano Concerto Number 4 with Casa de Sous, a classic. DBC uh, and the introduction and Rondo Capriccioso. Oh, it's, yeah, that's also by Saint-Saëns, thank you. With Zeno Francescati. And the DBC saxophone rhapsody. Is that what that is? The premier rhapsody, or oh, the clarinet rhapsody, pardon me, with Stanley Drucker. And there's the saxophone rhapsody with a guy named Rusher. And the ballade by Faure, also with Casa de Sous. That's a nice collection of French bonbons, goodies. Uh, let's see, Shostakovich at Poulenc. Shostakovich Piano Concertos numbers one and two with Andre Previn, yeah, and Bob Vacchiano, trumpet, 
And the Pulak Concerto for Two Pianos with Golden Fisdale, wonderful performance that tends to get forgotten in Pulak Double Concerto circles because, again, it's coupled with other things and it's stuffed away somewhere in a box and it hasn't been available singly since, like, 1965 or something. So what the heck? Uh, Strauss and Stravinsky. Strauss's Don Quixote. Um, that was the piece that, you know, Bernstein kind of made his career on, subbing for Bruno Walter. So he, does a, he has affection for Don Quixote, I would say. And the Stravinsky Concerto for Piano and Wind Instruments with Seymour Lipkin. I think that's the guy who's doing it. If I get all these wrong names wrong, the first names wrong, it's going to be amusing. Because, you know, they only give you the last name of the booklet. And I don't remember people's names. I'm terrible with names. Just horrible. I remember performances. I remember everything I've ever heard musically. But the names of the performers? <laughs> So if I just do a last name, his name was, I think, Seymour, right? Seymour Lipkin? That's what comes to mind. You know, maybe his name was Walfredo Lipkin. Who knows? Who cares? Okay. Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff. Piano concerto number one with Andre Watts. Seh. So, so. Uh, Rachmaninoff, piano concerto number two with Gary Grafman. Much better, I think. Tchaikovsky, piano concerto number one. Another one with Philippe Entremont. Okay. And the Dvorak piano concerto with Justus Franz. And the New York Philharmonic, I think this is just a terrible performance. Oh, my goodness, it's badly recorded. It sounds like hell. Um, it's interesting that Bernstein did it. I remember coming across this, you know, and, it was in, and maybe even this, I don't know, some other box. I didn't even remember that he did it. It's, you know, the revised version of the concerto. I mean, you know, Bernstein's Dvorak was kind of a strange thing. He did odd things. I mean, he did the New World fabulously, but he didn't do the Eighth Symphony. He did the Seventh, and there's some small works. And th that he did this this piano concerto, which was so completely, uh, you know, at that time considered to be irrelevant. But he did it. He did it. I was happy that he did it. Then I played it. Then I went, oh, okay. I mean, there have been so many better ones since. You know, I, there's just no reason for this thing. A Vivaldi, The Four Seasons, and then the concerto for Crazy Diverse Instruments, Opus uh, Opus RV 558 in C major. This is fabulous. It's in the arrangement that was made of it by, I believe, Alfredo Gazella, because it's written for like, uh, you know, violins in tromba marina and mandolins and ukuleles and all kinds of things that pop up in this thing. It's a wonderful piece. And it sounds delicious in this arrangement. It's got harps in it now. And oh, it's just fantastic. I love this performance. The Oboe Concerto RV 454, the Flute Concerto RV 441, Corigliano, Gomberg, Wummer, New York Philharmonic. Yes, okay, we're fine. Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, Isaac Stern. That's all that's on here? Apparently so. It's a good Tchaikovsky. You know, that was that was their their, their bread and butter. They're, they did that well. Um, the Barbara Daggio, Bartok Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta, and Paul Ben Chaim. Oh, yeah, the sweet psalmist of Israel. That is a beautiful work, a lovely work. The Bartok is also quite good, but a little bit scruffy. Like I said, you know, Bernstein and his string section could somehow sometimes diverge in their, in their you know, various means and ways and means there. But it's a very good performance. It's fine. And, and the, the first thing here, oh, the Barbara Adagio, eh, it's a classic, lovely. Okay, Beethoven, Overtures. Leonore number three, the consecration of the house, King Stephan, Fidelio, and Egmont. Good, good rough and tumble Bernstein Beethoven. Um, we're all the way up at CD 31. So we're making progress here. Berlioz, Benvenuto Cellini Overture, the Carnival, oh, Roman Carnival, Romeo and Juliet bits, and the Rakoxi March. Lots of fun. What's not to love? Then Bernstein stuff, The Age of Anxiety, his second symphony, and the ballet facsimile, which is wonderful. That's with Philippe Entremont. That's the stereo remake version. The mono one was with Lucas Foss. And here it is, The Age of Anxiety and the Serenade with Isaac Stern. There you go. We're in business. Those are also classics in mono, but what the heck. Uh, Bernstein, Candido, which all the Bernstein stuff. Okay, there's three discs of Bernstein stuff. So we don't even need to go through that, do we? because they're in 400,000 other boxes, and you get all of the Bernstein stuff, which is not a symphony. So you get On the Town, the three dance episodes, and the Prelude, Fugue, and Riffs, and the, another Serenade, stereo one this time, and Fancy Free, and Dybbuk, the complete ballet, which is really a much better piece than people make it out to be. Um, and, oh, it's fine. Okay, Bizet, Carmen Suites 1 and 2, Larlesienne Suites 1 and 2. What's not to love? 
Can you kill those pieces? I suppose you could. I, fortunately, nobody has. Offenbach, Gaete Parisienne, Supe Herald, and Amboise Thomas, Overtures. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Oodles and oodles of fun. Brahms, The Two Overtures, Academic Festival and Tragic, Serenade Number no. 2, Haydn Variations. Good Brahms record. The Serenade is particularly lovely. It's a very good performance of a, a still un, un, relatively unknown work because it has no violins. It's for woodwinds and lower strings. It's really a beautiful piece. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, Britain, The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. Two versions, because one of them has, has um, you know, narration by, I think, Schuyler Chapin. Is that the guy? Yeah, the boy, the kid. It's a kid. The Four C Interludes, the Passacaglia from Peter Grimes, and the Suite on English Folk Tunes. A very late Bernstein New York Philharmonic recording. I'm glad it came out, because Bernstein was like, you know, did didn't he conduct like a the premiere of Peter Grimes in New York or somewhere or in, in, in Tanglewood or something? Britain was writing it when he was in this country and Bernstein got up a performance of it. And I mean, he knew the work very, very well, but only recorded this. So that was really nice. Uh, then we've got all of the Copeland stuff. Well, two discs of Copeland stuff. Appalachian Spring, four dance episodes from Rodeo, Billy the Kid, Fanfare for the Common Man, the one sucked out of the Third Symphony, not the actual Fanfare for the Common Man, um, and Music for Theater, Connotations for Orchestra, Inscape for Orchestra, El Salon Mexico. I mean, you know, Bernstein was the great Copeland conductor of the 20th century, and these are great Copeland performances. Debussy, Image, the Ravel, Pavan for a Dead Princess, and Mother Goose Suite. Lovely performances. Quite good. Quite good. Very, very enjoyable. Um, and then La Mer. This is Debussy still. Prelude to the Afternoon of Fawn. Je. And Nocturnes. All the Debussy you could ever possibly want. It's lovely. I just want to make sure. This is just 44. Give me a second here. Disc 44. 21 to 41, 42. I want to make sure that you get all the Nocturnes. I was just listening to this, but of course I forgot. You know, well, what the hell? Yeah, I knew it. It's only the first two. You don't get CLN. I knew it. I knew it. I knew there was something up there. You know, because people in those days, they didn't do CLN, which is terrible. You should do them all or just not waste our time with it. Okay. That was disc 44. Dvorak, Carnival Overture, Slavonic Dance, two Slavonic Dances, who cares? The Bartered Bride Overture in Three Dances and the Moldau, quite fine. Full of, full of rambunctiousness and gusto. And then we have more Chabrier and Faya. Chabrier is Espana, El Amor Brujo with Marilyn Horn. Oh, that's yummy. That's a wonderful El Amor Brujo. Um, and let's see, the Fanfare Pour Une Fête and La Vida Breve, Interlude and Dance, and the suites from El Sombrero Destrest Picot. We don't play very much of, you know, Bernstein's Faya anymore. It's good that he did it. Oh, these are fun. The recording I remember is, 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 is a little bit, it's a little bit um, multi mic shall we say. It's kind of loud and in your face, but I don't know. It doesn't hurt the music any particularly. Gershwin, Rhapsody in Blue, and American in Paris, and Graffet's Grand Canyon Suite. Now the Graffet, of course, is wonderful. Um, and I have, I have a problem. I have a problem with Bernstein's Rhapsody in Blue. It's very slow. It's very mannered. It's very heavy-handed. It has all of the basic cuts. I, you know, you, you used to get a lot of love and a lot of respect because it was Bernstein and it's American and Gershwin is American and jazz and whatnot. I've never thought it was very good. Either of them, by the way, or any of the ones he did. I, I, I just don't think it's, it's idiomatic and I don't think it's respectful of the music. So that's me. Uh, but the Graffet is terrific. And Grieg, Pierkin Suites 1 and 2, Sibelius, uh, also Norwegian Dance number 2, March of the Dwarfs, then Sibelius, Vals Trees, The Swan of Twinella, Finlandia, you know, the usual goodies. They're lovely. Hindemith, Symphonic Metamorphosis, yeah. Concert Music for Strings and Brass, wow, wonderful. And Honegger, Pacific 231, Rugby and Pastoral d'Ete. Wonderful performances. Oh, my goodness. They go in the interesting Bernstein Unusual Repertoire box that we're never going to see. Um, Holst, The Planets. Eh, so-so. 
The story behind that's very interesting. I've told it before, but I might as well. I mean, a friend of mine who worked for Columbia suggested that Bernstein do the planets, and he thought, oh, okay, what the heck? It's going to be very easy. It's not a problem. Now, the planets is rhythmically tricky. Oh, it's so tricky. It's not easy to do at all. It takes a lot of rehearsal. Yeah, it does. And the performance was a disaster. And Bernstein went to my friend Pierre afterwards and grabbed him by the throat in the green room and said, you told me to do this. You know, what were you doing? Then he recorded it anyway. And it's a good, straightforward performance of the planets, but in no way particularly special. And in Ilgar, pomp and circumstance number one. Eh, it's okay. You know, go graduate to it. Charles Ives. Okay, all of Charles Ives. We've got the unanswered question, the Holiday Symphony, Central Park in the Dark, the Gong on the Hook and Ladder, the Circus Band March. Yay! I mean, Bernstein doing Ives is uh, a thing. It always was. It always will be. Mussorgsky pictures in an exhibition and a night on Bald Mountain, which is now Bear Mountain. You know, it's either bald or bear, depending on the title. And The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice is a failure. You'd think Bernstein would be great. It's all okay, more or less, until we get to the climax, when the, when the, you know, the sorcerer comes back and all hell's breaking loose and the orchestra goes, the cymbal crash. Well, the cymbal player misses. And they didn't fix it. Oh, well, it's not the whole piece is a failure because the cymbal play, player mi mi misses, you know, misses. It's kind of a failure because the performance itself is a little bit squeamish. I don't know why, but it is. But it's so funny. It goes, da-da! I remember the first time I heard it. and I just went, holy crap. They missed it and they didn't fix it. Oh, how could they do that? Terrible. Uh, let's see. Where are we? Uh, Dukai. Yeah, there we go. Um, Prokofiev, Peter and the Wolf, Carnival of the Animals, Danse Macabre by Saint-Saëns. Yeah, what's not to love? You know, it's all charming. Then we've got Peter and the Wolf with narration. I love it without narration. You can just listen to it. And the Carnival of the Animals with narration. I love it without narration. You can just listen to it. Yeah, I hate the narration. I wouldn't play that disc if my life depended on it. Then Ravel, oh, this is great, with the Orchestre de Nationale de France and the New York Phil, uh, Bolero, Alborada, and La Valse. That's the French folks. That's a fabulous, fabulous Ravel disc. And there's a rehearsal disc with that stuff, too, which is rather cool. Um, and I think the rehearsal disc is on, is on the EMI collection of Bernstein stuff. But still, they, they do, um, I think, La Valse. Yeah, something like that. And the Rhapsody Espanol, wonderful performances. More Ravel. Uh, Bolero Laval's The Rhapsody Espanol and Alborada del Gracioso, this time with the New York Philharmonic. I like the French ones better. I really do, but they're all, they're all quite good. And then Daphne and Chloe and Laval's. Well, I mean, Laval's again. Three Laval's is holy mackerel. Yeah, there are. And the Daphne, the Daphne is, is okay. Um, there's a wonderful, there's a wonderful moment at the end, in the back and out where it's going, the trumpets go, you know the part, right? Sure, you have it memorized. And it's, the timpani are going, boom, 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 boom. Well, there's no timpani there. They're missing. They're in the score, not in the parts, or they're in the parts, but not in the, yeah, they're in the score, but not in the parts. Anyway, Bernstein leaves them out. They should be there. And I remember Gunter Schuller in his book, The Complete Conductor, made a whole hoo-ha over the fact that Bernstein left out those timpani. And he shouldn't have. It's true. He shouldn't have. That was a carelessness. Or maybe he looked at it and decided they just shouldn't be there. I don't know, but they should be there. Okay. Respighi and Sibelius. Oh, they go well together. Find the Pines of Rome and Roman Festivals. Those are great performances. And the Roman Festivals, oh my God, what a smoker that is. And again, nobody knew he did that because that just wasn't around for a billion years. And then Sibelius Luanatar with Phyllis Curtin, a strange performance of Luanatar. Phyllis Curtin deserves credit for learning Finnish and doing it in Finnish at a time when no one was doing it. Um, and the, the, But the performance is really a little strange and a great Pochula's daughter, one of the great ones, fabulous and amazing. Rimsky-Korsakov, Scheherazade and Capriccio Espanol. Good, beefy, fun, noisy, trashy. I enjoyed them very much. 
Rossini Overtures, Barbara Seville, The Italian Women in Algiers, William Till, La Gazza Ladra, Simiramide, The Silken Ladder, and then Supe, Light Cavalry, etc. I can look for the etc. if you want, but they're great. They're wonderful. Strauss, also Sprach Zarathustra. Eh, it's okay. I don't think Bernstein really believed in it. I remember his young young person's, young people's concert about Zarathustra, where he like sort of whips through it. He does the opening and he says, well, then there's a part that does this, but we're not going to play that. And then there's a part that does this. Let's listen to a bit of that. Then there's more of this stuff. Well, we're going to ignore that. I mean, he clearly wasn't committed to the cause. I mean, he really wasn't. And who can blame him? I mean, it's piece is such nonsense. And then Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks and Don Juan. Perfectly fine. Johann Strauss 1 and 2, the usual. Uh, Richard Strauss again, the festival prelude. Well, there's a rarity. A very rare, rare rarity. And and the Dance of the Seven Veils. And then Stravinsky's Pulcinella. This is not a great Pulcinella. It's, cra it's rather scruffy. Again, um, it just needs more sharpness and edge than Bernstein delivers in this performance. And he's a great Stravinsky conductor. He really is. But I just find this performance to be um, just, just not not clean and zippy enough. It works better with chamber orchestras anyway. Um, then the Rite of Spring in Petrushka. <laughs> Fabulous. And then the Rite of Spring again, because he did with the London Symphony. He remade it. Also very good. Um, not well recorded, though. And the Firebird Suite. I wish it had sounded better. But then he redid it again in Israel. I mean, you can get like all kinds of Bernstein. You can go to the Bernstein Rite of Spring store and just pick one. Tchaikovsky, Romeo and Juliet, yay. A few, I think there's a few extra cymbal crashes. And the Capriccio Italien, Francesca de Rimini, March Slav, all good, good, passionate, slobbering stuff. By the way, we're at disc 66, so we're almost there. Hang in, folks. Um, Tchaikovsky, 1812 Overture, okay, yeah, it's not a, it's not a sonic spectacular, but it's quite good. Um, Hamlet, which is wonderful, the Serenade for Strings, which is lovely, and the Andante Cantabile from the String Quartet which is lovely. The Nutcracker Suite, Swan Lake Excerpt, Sleeping Beauty Waltz, Eugene O'Negan, Polonaise. I mean, you know, these were those, one of those, you know, bleeding chunks discs, basically, and you got it and your chunks bled. <laughs> That's what happened. It's okay. It's all right. Wagner, music from the Flying Dutchman, Rienzi, Lohengrin, Meistersinger, Valkyrie, all the usual goodies. And they're, 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 they sound very usual. Um, then the Tannhäuser Overture and the Festive March, Tristan and Isolde, Isolde Prelude and Liebes Tot. Um, they're, they're very good performances. They're perfectly fine. Then we have Russian Masters. Oh, my God. Glinka Borodin, Glier, Ippolitov, Ivanov, Mosorsky, Prokofiev, Shostakovich, Lopatnikov. Mm-hmm. You get everything. Everything by everybody Russian. Oh, let's go see what's on it, shall we? Let's have a look. We're on 71. We have a little time. We're making good progress. Let's see if I can get this out of here. 61, 67, 69, 70, 71. Okay, this is just for fun. Just, just for us. Okay, Ruslan and Ludmila. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, it's a little slow. I mean, you want to get it in in under five minutes if you can. This is five minutes, 22 seconds. Borodin in the steppes of Central Asia. Glier, the red poppy Russian sailor's dance. Two Caucasian sketches in the village. And of course, the procession of the Sardar. Do, 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 Prokofiev's Scythian Suite. Well, that's fun. The March from the Love for Three Oranges. Two bits of Lieutenant Kijé, but not the whole thing. The Wedding in the Troika. Uh, the Polka from Shostakovich's Age of Gold. Nikolai Lopatnikov's Concerto for Orchestra. That's an interesting work. That goes in the interesting, unusual Bernstein box that we'll never see. And, and that's it. That's quite a collection. Yeah, there's another one coming up here, too. Oh, my God. The next one. Let's just Let's just... Let's just go through these. I mean, I might as well forget that. Let's let's do the rest of them this way. Because I think we'll go through up to number 80. Uh, Copeland, Danson Cubano, Elliot Carter, Concerto for Orchestra, W.C. Handy's St. Louis Blues. Mm -hmm. Dave Brubeck, 
Dialogues for Jazz Combo and Orchestra, Larry Austin, Improvisations for Orchestra and Jazz Soloist with Louis Armstrong and the Louis Armstrong Quartet and Dave Brubeck Quartet. And, oh, this is that, you know, third wave or second way or, you know, classical jazz fusion thing that was kind of a thing in the, in the early 60s. Isn't that fun? I mean, that's really fun. I mean, not really very good pieces for the most part, but they're fun, right? And then we've got, what do we got here? Ah, Copla del Salon Mexico. Oh, this is the, the Spanish thing. I love this one. Fernandez, the, the, the Raisado de Pastoreo Batuque. The Batuque. It does that for like three minutes. And Guarnieri, the Danza Brasileira. And Rafael Senza Maya, Lucas Foss, Forion, and Vaughn Williams. I mean, <laughs> this collection. The Talus Fantasia. It's a beautiful performance. Unbelievably slow. Yeah, it's like 18 minutes long. Oh my goodness, it's really slow, but beautifully done. The Fantasia on Green Sleeves and Mio's La Création du Monde. How's that for a collection? Wow, baby. Baby, music of our time. Yes, this is the one where Bernstein did all the music he hated, all on one convenient disc. Ligeti, or Ligeti, Atmospheres, Feldman, Out of Last Pieces, New York Philharmonic, Four Improvisations by the Orchestra for No Reason Whatsoever. Um, it sounds like a jumble. Uh, Denisov, uh, Crescendo e Diminuendo, Gunter Schuller's, uh, let's see, tri Triplum, Triplum, and Luigi Dalla Piccola, Tartiniana for Violin and Orchestra with Ruth Posselt, violin. Hmm, that's interesting. And, oh yeah, this has got some great stuff. Piston, the incredible flutist, or flautist, whichever you prefer. It's a lovely work, it's a wonderful performance. Edward Burlingame Hill, prelude for orchestra. William Schumann, in praise of Sean, canticle for orchestra. Terrific disc of unusual or a slightly unusual American music, although the Piston's sort of very well known by now. Then we've got, let's see, Rhapsodies. Okay, List, Hungarian Rhapsodies numbers one and four, Inescu Ruminian Rhapsody number one, Brahms, Hungarian Dances numbers five and six, Mozart's German Dance in C Major, The Sleigh Ride. Yeah, the Schlitten Fart, or whatever you call it in German. List, Les Preludes, Dinisu, Ora Staccato. Why does anyone play that? It's like a minute long, two minutes long here. Everyone does it, this Dinisu, Dinisu thing. I, I don't get it. Wolf Ferrari, The Jewels of the Madonnas, Intermezzo 2. Oh, that's nice. It's only two minutes and 54 seconds. Some of that goes into the unusual Bernstein box that we'll never see. Then we have Overtures. Mozart, Marriage of Figaro, Nikolai, The, the Merry Wives of Windsor, Reznicek, Donna Diana, uh, Strauss II, Fledermaus and Gypsy Baron, Ambrose Thomas, Mignon, and Weber, Freischutz, Orianti, and Oberon. And more overtures. We're almost there. This is all that's left. This is it. Uh, Mendelssohn, Roy Bloss, and the Hebrides, Schubert, Die Teufels Lustschloss. How many people were doing that in the day? Schumann, Manfred and Genevieve, Weber, The Introduction to the Dance, orchestrated by Berlioz, Humperdinck, Hansel and Gretel's Children's Prayer, and Wolf Ferrari, The Secret of Susanna. That's such a great little piece. It's what, it's two minutes and 40 seconds? I love that little overture. It's got a great second theme. Like that. Dances from operas. You ready? The Palofzian dances. Fortunately, without chorus. Thank God. Um, and Gounod's Faust Ballet Music, The Dance of the Hours from La Gioconda by Ponchielli, uh, The Dance of the Tumblers from Korsakoff's The Snow Maiden, Sanson the Bacchanal from Damson and, Dan from Damson and, Damson and Salila, <laughs> Samson and Delilah, that's who it's from, Verdi, Aida, all, all the dance music from Aida, the ballet, the grand march, the the Dance of the Moorish Slaves, The Dance of the Priestesses, oh, all those people. And the waltz from Eugene Onegin, Tchaikovsky. And finally, last 
but not least, the end, great marches. Uh, let's see, we've got Sousa, Semper Fidelis, The Thunderer, Washington Post, Hands Across the Sea, uh, Joseph Franz Wagner, Under the Double Eagle, William Steffi, The Battle Hymn of the Republic, Charles Zimmerman, Anchors Away, Sousa again, The Stars and Stripes Forever, I was looking for that, Traditional, The British Grenadiers, Thomas Arne, Rule Britannia, Claude Joseph Rouget, oh yeah, right, The Marseillaise, that thing. Um, Bagley, The National Emblem, Meyerbeer, La Prophète, The Coronation March, Mendelssohn, The War March of the Priests from Athalia, people don't do that much anymore, Verdi, Aida, The Grand March, well, what, what the heck again, Colonel Bogey by Alford, Kenneth Alford, the one that everyone thought Malcolm Arnold wrote in Bridge on the River Kwai, but it's not, it's by Alford, that's the one you know, Comet, it makes your sink turn green, Comet, I'd rather use Mr. Clean, Comet, it makes you vomit, it's that to that one, you know, and then we've got, let's see, John Stafford Smith, The Star Spangled Banner, twice, okay, twice, there you go, 80 CDs of of concertos and other things by the one and the only Leonard Bernstein. Is this still even still available? I feel like tickling him under his chin. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. That's what's there. You've got it. Um, if you can find it and if you want it, you can get it. It's all going to get reissued again anyway. Let me just stick it away. Here it all is. Go forth and listen. Take care, friends. Keep on listening, of course. <laughs>